National Space Station. That's why it might look a little off center uh, from the uh, heads up display that you can see on the uh, screen when we have it up. But everything looking good. Again, uh, on board the station, two astronauts, Canadian David St. Jacques and NASA astronaut Anne McLean, inside monitoring the vehicle. Uh, you'll hear them refer to the RPOP, uh, which is the Rendezvous Proximity Operations Program. That's just the name of the program that they're using on a laptop inside of the station to actually monitor Dragon. And as they just demonstrated a little while ago, the crew has the ability uh, to send commands to make Dragon hold or retreat or even abort if they see anything that looks a little out of sorts uh, with its approach. But everything going real smoothly so far. We should be just about two minutes away. Orientation as expected. Copy all. All right, another good call down. We're about 50 meters away so far, so only 30 meters to go, and then we're at waypoint two. Once we're given the go ahead to approach from waypoint two, uh, we will be the next big calls we're going to be looking out for are that soft capture contact and then hard capture. You can start to see the uh, space station in great detail here. Um, again, this is from a view of the uh, forward media cam at the top of the Dragon 2 module. Uh, just to reiterate, this camera is not directly on the center line of the docking axis. Uh, oh, this is a fantastic view of uh, Dragon in the sunlight from the International Space Station. Um, so normally when we're getting views from the Dragon for this webcast, you're going to be seeing a camera that's not quite on the center line, so it's a little bit off. And uh, it may not look like we're heading directly towards the docking adapter, but uh, if we're lucky enough, we might get some views from the centerline camera in the very center of the hatch from the space station. And you can see us kind of heading on right in. But right now, um, this is an unbelievable view from the space station. You can see Dragon 2 in full light with its nose cone open, uh, its soft capture ring deployed. Uh, you can actually start to see those three petals that I was talking about earlier on that ring uh, 120 degrees apart. That ring is uh, extended above the hatch uh, by six hexapod arms that are all attached to Dragon by springs. Um, so that, that will be the first part of Dragon to make contact with the ISS. Uh, and when it does, those springs will uh, compress and absorb and dampen uh, any of the relative velocity differences between the space station and Dragon. This soft capture system was actually subjected to extensive testing and uh, the six degree of freedom dynamic test system at NASA Johnson. And uh, this was actually the very same system they used uh, to test other docking systems at NASA. And we're hearing that Dragon is now at waypoint two, about 20 meters away from station. So again, station Dragon Houston is going to hold 20 here. meter hold confirmed. Perform step eight in one decimal one zero two. Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Station for step eight, we can confirm really vehicle mode is at. hold. Minimum range observed was 19.75. Orientation as expected, uh, vehicles in the corridor and holding at 20. Performing review. Uh, right now you're seeing and a view from that Thank center line camera. This is rebroadcast from the International Space Station. So this is what the astronauts in the station are seeing. Um, it looks like it's aligned right and ready to dock. Uh, it's, it's what I was saying before, it's sort of unbelievable this is the same spacecraft that we saw yesterday on top of the Falcon 9 at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, now it's in space uh, just 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Yeah, and it's all, it's all coming to this. It's all coming to that go for docking, which we're going to stand by again. The teams are now going to be doing kind of their final go, no go poll, and then they're going to get the call and we're going to hear it and it's going to be Dragon is go for docking. So just 20 meters away, successful hold. Uh, I didn't comment earlier, but we did hear that there was a good controllability demo. Again, that was just a demo, just slowing Dragon down to basically mimic the final speeds that it'll be at for docking. And that was also done successfully. So we're going to stand by, continue to get this great view of Dragon and wait for that final go for docking.
right, and right now we're just continuing to hold Dragon still just 20 meters away from the space station. And all the teams now just taking a final look at the data. Uh, Dragon's moved through all the demos so far without any issues, not tracking any on the spacecraft and continuing to get some good views as we do have that signal with the International Space Station. So holding at 20, and then we're gonna be listening for the final go, no go for docking. Then it'll be time for Dragon to close in. This is currently a beautiful view of Dragon 2 in full sunlight. Uh, many of us at SpaceX have waited years for this view, uh, approaching the International Space Station. Uh, just a quick note about the things, the features you can see on the Dragon 2 from this view. Uh, obviously, the big structure at the top is the nose cone in its retracted position. Uh, it rotates uh, away from its uh, stowed position for launch and, uh, and back towards uh, where it is right now for docking and orbital operations. Um, you can also see that soft capture ring uh, right now, those are it's it's deployed and, and out in front of the hatch. Uh, a bit tough to see the distance between the soft capture ring and the hatch, uh, but it's standing off just a little bit and ready to make contact with the international docking adapter. And station crew is ready for see docking. Those four Draco thrusters uh, around the hatch. And we copy. And we just heard Anne McLean report the crew is ready and for Anne docking. And Anne currently assessing lighting. And that call back from the Capcom and Houston, Leslie, Ringo, just the teams looking at the lighting. Uh, as Tom mentioned a little while ago, the sun is expected to set in about 12 minutes on the station and Dragon, so they'll be heading into an orbital nighttime. So I think they just want to make sure they have all the right conditions uh, for the final approach and docking of this spacecraft. Again, the crew's going to be monitoring. Uh, and they're using that centerline camera now to monitor primarily from that 20 meter point all the way in. Uh, they're gonna continue to be in the loop all the way up until just two meters away. And then we might hear uh, a call out over the space to grounds CHOP, which stands for crew hands off point. And that just means everything at that point is in the hands of Dragon and the space station, including abort commands. Uh, one important thing to remember here, and this sort of just blows my mind every time I stop and think about it, is uh, Dragon looks like it's perfectly still with respect to the space station, and, and it is, but both the space station and Dragon are moving at 17,500 miles per hour in orbit around the Earth. Uh, the orbital mechanics and math uh, required to line these two spacecraft up together is just sort of mind-boggling, and it's always impressive to see it happen in real time like this. and Station Houston on one. While we're holding here, please command the docking light to on, O-N. Copy, commanding docking light on. And so the crew's going to command the docking on, light command on, LED on Dragon. And we copy. And there we hear confirmation that the command's been sent. Again, this is what the astronauts on board are looking at right now. This is that centerline camera uh, that they're using to watch as Dragon makes that final approach. Uh, the team's all looking at systems, and they're also... Uh, looking at the communication coverage between here and the International Space Station, they do want to make sure we have a good signal for that final approach and docking. Uh, so we might be standing by for a couple of minutes. Uh, Dragon able to dock in daytime or nighttime, that uh, is not going to matter for today's operations. Uh, but they are going to be looking to make sure we have a strong signal and we might have a short dropout coming up in just a couple of minutes. So we're going to stand by. Dragon's continuing to hold at just 20 meters away.
mentioned that docking light being turned on. This is uh, special for me, even in particular, uh, having worked on both the communication system between the Dragon and the space station, and also on that centerline camera module, which has the LED that they were talking about. Um, I spent uh, months at SpaceX with a, mo with a unit of that on my desk, uh, testing that LED, and to see it happening in space is uh, truly extraordinary. <laughs> I was going to ask. So Tom basically built the spacecraft. <laughs> uh, what I mean, what is it? What is it like to? See it sitting there. It, uh, it, it looks unreal. For me and everyone else at SpaceX that has uh, poured their life force into this vehicle for the past uh, uh, how many years, uh, it's unbelievable to see this thing flying for real. Like I said before, it's kind of wild to see this uh, just 24, 27 hours ago on top of a Falcon 9 and now in space. It's sort of a, just a dream come true is what I'd say. And you can see the shadows starting to creep along Dragon again. We are going to be heading into that orbital nighttime shortly as both Dragon and the International Space Station flying over the Indian Ocean right now. They're actually a couple hundred miles south of Australia, right between Australia and Antarctica. And pretty soon they're going to be crossing the Terminator line. That's the line separating night from day on the Earth's surface. And so things are going to get a little bit darker, Speaking but that's when we heard the crew status, get the call to, to you know, turn we're the docking light on. Sunset so that we have a good view of the back plate. Mission copies. And you just heard that call up to the station. So they are going to wait until sunset until they resume that final approach and then sunset is scheduled to come at, in just about seven minutes from now at 45 after the hour. So we're going to stand by, continue to get these views of dragons. We're going to lose signal for a couple of minutes uh, shortly and then that's going to lock back up right as the sun's going down and then we'll be ready to move dragon in from that 20 meter hold point uh, to the docking. We're almost, we're almost, almost at docking. There. So don't go anywhere. We're going to hold for just a few minutes. Uh, sunset is expected at 2.45 a.m. Eastern, oh, excuse me, Pacific time. Uh, so as soon as that happens, we'll be able to continue with the docking. Uh, stand by.
Houston on one, stand by as Dragon is about to resume approach. Station copies. And we just heard the call up to the International Space Station crew. Dragon is go for approach. You can already see the thrusters firing, so it's leaving that waypoint number two where it's been sitting at 20 meters away. Now it's time for the final docking. At 20 meters, Dragon was just spitting distance away from that uh, international docking adapter. Now it is closing those 20 meters in preparation for soft capture. So right now it is uh, orbital nighttime. Uh, so the light you're seeing is both light from the International Space Station pointed at Dragon and then the docking light, uh, which is the bright spot in the center of Dragon's hatch you can see right now. Right now, Dragon's flight computer is uh, using those Draco thrusters, as you can see them firing on your screen to uh, Station Houston stabilize. and one, Dragon is resuming approach and is go for docking. Monitor per steps nine and ten in one decimal one zero two. Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Station copies. Vehicle mode is approach to docking port. Primary range is decreasing vehicle is centered. Copy all. And getting good reports from Anne McLean there on board the International Space Station. Dragon is approaching everything in on the center and still looking good. So the crew is using that centerline camera on the Dragon spacecraft just to do all of their final monitoring of the vehicle. Uh, this camera a little off center. Uh, this is not the one the crew's using, uh, but this is one that we have. But you can see now that international docking adapter. It's attached to a larger black piece of the station. That's a pressurized mating adapter, which is then attached to actually one of the modules, uh, which is known as Node 2 in the Harmony. It's the Harmony module. So Dragon continuing to close in. It's expected to take just about five minutes or so and there's a great side-by-side -side look one view on your left from dragon one view on your right from the international space station on the view on the left uh, from dragon looking at the space station we can finally see those details of the international docking adapter um, the ida is a passive system and uh, the dragon contains all the active components of that docking system you can actually see those uh those androgynous petals, uh, the, those three petals that are kind of sticking at 120 degrees apart from each other on the IDA on the left-hand side. In the very middle is actually a visual docking target uh, that the astronauts can use to judge whether or not the Dragon is right on course. Uh, it has a little stick that comes off uh, from the center of it so you can see the stick shadow and determine whether or not you're directly on center in all three axes. Uh, like Dan said, this camera view on the left from Dragon is not the center line camera. It's actually the forward media cam. Range is nine and a half and decreasing. Vehicle is centered. Largest excursion observed is less than half a meter. Less than half a degree. Copy. All right, we're inside 10 meters. Halfway there. Uh, like I was saying, this camera view right here is just a little bit off center from the center line, so it may look like we're not approaching that IDA directly head on, uh, just because the camera's not in the right position, but uh, the crew has that center line camera, which is directly dead on. Um, and as long as we keep hearing these good call outs, it sounds like Dragon is dead right where it needs to be. And there it is, there's that center line camera view that the crew in the International Space Station is using. They use the overlays to uh, figure out, and that, and that visual docking, uh, uh, guide right there to make sure the dragon is exactly where it needs to be as it approaches. On the right hand side you can start to see the mechanisms uh, of the SpaceX docking system aboard the dragon. Uh, the very first part of dragon that will make contact with the ISS is that soft capture ring. You can see it's extended forward from the hatch of the dragon right now. As and soon as those pedals make contact, uh, latching pawls will engage and hold the pedals against the uh, opposite ones on the IDA. And contact pins will depress, and we should hear the call out for soft capture achieved. 
Three hands off point. Copy. All right, so we're at that crew hands off point. That means we're about two meters away. Crew no, no longer sending commands. Every dragon doing everything on its own. Self capture confirmed. Mission confirmed. Uh, you can hear the cheers behind us at uh, SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. We have confirmation of a soft capture of the Dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station. Uh, you can see in your view the Dragon's still moving around a little bit. Uh, that's the soft capture ring is attached to Dragon by way of six arms that are all attached to springs that help dampen the motion. The difference in the relative velocities between the Dragon and the space station. Uh, this is unbelievable news for everyone here at SpaceX and at NASA. Yeah, that that capture, uh, that docking coming at 2:51 a.m. Pacific, 5:51 a.m. over on the East Coast. Uh, as the International Space Station and Dragon were flying just about 260 statue miles over planet Earth, just north of New Zealand. So, Ring Dragon reflection now in progress. Docked. Well, no, we're not quite there not yet. Not quite yeah. there yet. <laughs> we actually, so we've achieved soft capture, uh, which is what the call that you heard. Uh, so the next step is going to be hard capture. Uh, hard capture is achieved via 12 uh, latching hooks that are all around the inside of the uh, Dragon hatch and they'll actuate and grab onto hooks on the other side and pull uh, and hold the Dragon tight against the ISS. That's right, this whole process expected to take about 15 minutes, so first that soft capture ring is gonna retract, and then the hard capture sequence can begin its process. That'll take about 12 minutes, uh, and then there are two umbilicals that will actually get mated to the Dragon spacecraft from the station, and that is to provide power and data to the spacecraft and transfer that over to the station. And at that point, it will be fully attached and ready to stay for the next five days. So again, that uh, capture coming at 2.51 a.m. Pacific time, 5.51 a.m. over on the East Coast as the Dragon and station were flying just north of New Zealand. So there we go. And you can imagine this, yeah, I mean, this is unbelievable for uh, for everyone here that's worked so hard on Dragon and with NASA. Um, you can imagine that soft capture retraction, sort of like Dragon doing a pull-up and bringing itself closer to the yeah. station to get those hard capture hooks ready to go. Uh, like I said, this is going to take just a few minutes, so the whole process takes about 15 minutes to get uh, the soft capture ring retracted, the hard ha capture hooks uh, engaged, and then those umbilicals mated. Uh, so we still got a little bit more ways to go here. Uh, Dragon is attached, and we're all very excited about that. But uh, lots more to come. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hang out until that hard capture and everything is complete. And then after that, the action's not over. Then it's uh, on to hatch opening. So it'll take about two hours after all of this is complete uh, for the hatches to be open. At least that's what we're tracking on the timeline right now. Uh, in that space of time, they have to pressurize what's known as the vestibule. So that's actually the area of both Dragon and the space station that are normally exposed to the vacuum of space. That is now going to form a tight seal, and so they have to pressurize that. The crew will actually open up a seal manually and insert air from the station into that vestibule. And then they have to do a series of leak checks, obviously, just to make sure that everything is good uh, before they move to opening the hatches. And there's a hatch on the pressurized mating adapter side, and there's also a hatch on the Dragon itself. And so that'll be coming up a little bit later, and then we'll actually see crew members go inside of Crew Dragon in space for the very first time. They could meet Ripley as soon as they get inside there. That's right, and there, yeah, there is there is one passenger already <laughs> on board the Dragon spacecraft now attached to the International Space Station. Two if you count the uh, zero-G indicator that's, right. that's flying along with Ripley there. Uh, yeah, but so those, for those of you just joining us, we did have a successful uh, soft capture. Like, like we've been saying, it's going to take just a little bit longer um, with a lot more action coming up. Uh, so stay with us as we head towards uh, eventual hard capture and then hatch opening. Ready to hook indicated, MCS reconfiguration in progress. 
Station copies and sensors. The undocking plate sensors are off. Congratulations to all of the teams on a successful docking. And we copy in. Many thanks. Station Houston in one, hook drive in progress. Copy. All right, and so the hard capture sequence is underway. We've already heard that the first set of hooks are in place. The second set now driving, so Dragon almost firmly attached to the International Space Station. Again, once this hard dock is completed, uh, they're going to mate two umbilicals, which will actually provide some power Station and data to the spacecraft and allow it to transfer back and Go forth uh, with the International Space Station. And you're going to hear uh, calls to route, to to uh, by NASA astronaut Ann McLean. That's who we're hearing right now. 
and then they're going to be on task to then start all the vestibule pressurization and eventually uh, get the hatches open on the Dragon spacecraft and then go inside and that's going to be the next really cool thing that we're going to be looking for in a couple hours from now. That is true. That hard dock sequence, uh, there are 12 total hooks in a ring all around the Dragon hatch and they, uh, they close those hooks by driving them, uh, actuating them in sets of six each. And so we heard a call out for both the first set of, uh, set of hooks were closed and we're getting close towards that full hard capture. Probably and hearing some Houston Houston one. we can confirm hard capture is complete. Hard capture complete. Excellent news. That that Congratulations once set. again to the huge team around the world that made this possible. The second set of rings was uh, fully fully retracted. And, and we can uh, the, the success the of the, the entire down. teams around the world. All right. So Dragon now firmly attached to the International Space Station. So now again, this is going to kick off about two hours or so uh, until we actually get those hatches open. Houston Station Lab forward hatches open. And so again, right now the crew's going to start. Uh, the crew's going to start moving in. Uh, they're going to open up. And, and uh, we can. Uh, we heard you copied on the lab board hatch is open at this time. Um, you guys do have a go to pick up in the first yellow activity on the Vista timeline so again, for the forward PMA leak check and opening the No Q forward hatch. Um, be advised that uh, we're going to need 15 minutes um, for ventilation to be complete before we'll have you pick up in further PMA activities. Copy that and works, and uh, we have the uh, Note 2 HD camera on. Copy. We'll come on board with you guys. All right. Well, now the Dragon has completed that docking sequence. Uh, it's going to go undergo a series of checks. Again, they're going to pressurize the vestibule, and they're going to do some leak checks, and then we're actually going to be able to open up the hatch. For now, though, why don't we uh, send it over to Gary real quick. He's standing by in the International Space Station flight control room. Gary, how's everybody feeling there? It's got to be great. I mean, Dragon's now attached to the space station. Definitely uh, good vibes in here, Dan. Uh, actually, as soon as we got uh, hard capture confirmed, we had a round of applause here in Mission Control Houston. It was a very exciting time. Uh, the beginning, really, of a new era of human spaceflight. This is like the first step um, until we start having commercial crew providers uh, bringing humans to the International Space Station launching from American soil once again. Very exciting time. But uh, for the crew, again, a lot of uh, uh, monitoring operations, successful retreat commands sent, everything. It was a very smooth uh, docking for Dragon to the International Space Station, but still a lot of work to do. Again, like you said, they're going to be pressurizing the vestibule and then actually entering the hatch. We'll be covering that live. Uh, you might see them wearing hardline oxygen and uh, taking some air samples, just part of the normal procedures for a new vehicle or for this particular new vehicle, um, just to make sure everything is okay. Okay. And then uh, maybe later on today, we'll be doing a nice uh, welcoming ceremony to uh, officially welcome Dragon to the International Space Station. So again, uh, congratulations from the uh, crew, from the teams here in Mission Control Houston. An amazing docking of uh, Dragon to the International Space Station. A lot of work to do. We'll pass it back to you uh, to really wrap us up, but uh, we got a lot of work to do. Thanks. All right, thanks so much, Gary. Uh, so we got this thing attached, and now again we're gonna we're gonna wait a little while while they pressurize the vestibule, do the leak checks, and then it'll be time for hatch opening. So we are gonna take a little bit of a break, but before we do, we have a special guest who's just about to join us. Uh, we just talked to uh, Doug Hurley a little bit earlier in today's broadcast. He's one of those two commercial crew astronauts who's actually slated to fly a Dragon into space a little bit later this year. And now, if we can have him come run in real quick, we have Mr. Bob Bankin, 
the other NASA astronaut, Hi, Bob. Dave, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. What's it, what's it like to see this thing at dock to station? Well, it's just been a super exciting week for us. We came from Florida after watching the launch, got on orbit, got activation done, and the next big milestone was autonomous docking and getting that demonstrated. And of course, the station crew is monitoring, but uh, that's how we're going to be uh, getting Doc do Dragon on board, dock on station uh, in the future. And so it was just a super exciting to see it. I know you heard the applause and all the clapping that went along with uh, the accomplishment today. And so just uh, one more milestone that gets us ready for our flight coming up here. Now, Bob, how, how do you expect uh, flying a Dragon 2 to be different than flying uh, any previous spacecraft that you feel fun? You know, I came uh, to the space station before uh, two times uh, with a space shuttle. A lot of manual flying associated with that, so arriving underneath space station, making... Houston station, station on one. And then slowly coming into contact is all done manually. Opening the Note 2 forward and It took up basically four four people to monitor the systems at the same time that you were, you know, accomplishing the flying task. Dragon's a lot different than that. You know, Doug and I will do it for the first time together, primarily in a monitoring role. We may push a button or two to demonstrate that we have the capability to, to intervene if we need to, but uh, the vehicle's pretty much going to do the work uh, uh, autonomously just like it did today. It's great to hear. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us real quick, Bob. Successful docking to the International Space Station, Dragon now attached. Again, so for now, we are gonna take a quick break for about two hours while we wait for all the leak checks to take place, and then it's time for hatch opening. So we're gonna see crew members go inside for the first time. And it sounds like everybody's getting pretty excited here at SpaceX headquarters. So don't go anywhere. We will be back after a short break to cover the rest of hatch open uh, when that comes around. Station on one, after one minute, BPDT is zero. Proceeding to opening the hatch. Copy and concur. Now we can fix back to nominal is complete. Now I'm moving on to step five, decimal two. Houston station on one, no two forward hatch open. Have a copy. We are turning on the fan and starting our 15 minute timer.
This is Mission Control Houston. What you're seeing now is uh, Canadian Space Agency astronaut David St. Jacques opening the hatch uh, into the pressurized mating adapter. On the other side there, you can see another hatch. This is the hatch that will actually open up into the international docking adapter uh, and allow uh, the uh, and in between the international docking adapter and the Dragon capsule. Still a lot of procedures for uh, David St. Jacques and you saw uh, NASA astronaut Anne McLean floating there as well. This is part of the uh, ingress and, and uh, basically pressurizing the vestibule and getting uh, the pressure equalized between um, the International Space Station and Dragon and the International Docking Adapter in between making sure that it's safe to open up the hatch. Once they do open up the hatch, they'll be on yeah, hardline oxygen, um, and that will be reflected once we do the hatch opening coverage here in just a few hours. David St. Jacques and uh, Anne McLean will be conducting these procedures uh, over the next about uh, hour or so. And then in about two hours, we'll come back and uh, and we'll uh, start broadcasting live to start doing uh, the actual hatch opening coverage, where you see that soft cover in the background open, and the station crew members will go inside. We'll actually provide live views from the inside of Dragon, if uh, if we are receiving them at that time. A lot of work to do for the uh, International Space Station mem crew members until we come back on for hatch opening coverage. This is Mission Control Houston. And Station Houston on one, and in David, want to let you know that we're going to move our USOS ops back over to Space to Ground 2. We have returned RSA 2 over to Call 5, so you should have ICOM back. And copy your thumbs up. Moving over to 2. And Station Houston on two, um, for your guys' awareness, the 15-minute timer will expire at 11.25. Okay, timer expiring in uh, 10 minutes. Yep, that's a good readback.
Houston and two, your 15 minute timer has now expired. And so you guys have a go to pick up in the next activity, which is the forward um, pressurization and ingress part one. Um, you do have a go in step two, decimal two, when you pick up in that. And then also regarding the center disc cover, the sill location for that will be node two, deck four. Copy no two deck four for the disc cover and copy go on step two small four. And one other item for the cover, if you could report the serial number, we much appreciate. for Center Discover. Go ahead, Ann. That serial number is 1006. Copy, 1006. On two, a pass equalization valve was closed at 11:29. Copy 11:29. on two for a timeline. Go ahead, Dave. So I understand they're now starting a thermal clock. Um, just letting you know, we will be ready to pick up whenever convenient, uh, please. Copy all.
ground two for the warning. Go ahead, Ann. We uh, just got the alarm annunciation uh, for us an electron catastrophic failure RS. Copy that. We'll talk to Moscow about that.
caution and two, no action for the enabled caution. We're configuring hardline and that's why that went off. Copy, thank you.
This is Mission Control Houston. If you are just tuning in, you're getting a live view of Dragon's, uh, the Dragon Crew Dragon attached to the forward end of the International Space Station. Uh, if you missed it uh, earlier today, the Dragon docked to the forward end of the International Space Station. You can see there docking to the International Docking Adapter. Uh, the black structure to the right of that is the pressurized mating adapter. Docking time occurred at 4.51 a.m. Central Time this morning. At the time of docking, the International Space Station was 260 statute miles over the Earth, uh, just off the north coast of New Zealand. Immediately after uh, docking, after the monitoring of uh, the docking by the station crew members, David St. Jock of the Canadian Space Agency and Anne McLean of NASA, uh, the two configured, um, or at least set up the configuration for pressurizing the vestibule in between the pressurized mating adapter where the station is and uh, the Dragon. Of course, you can see the white structure there, the international docking adapter. The crew opened up the hatch uh, into the pressurized mating adapter. You can see the hatch opened and the white uh, cylindrical structure of the pressurized mating adapter there. And uh, began setting up procedures, including the camera, uh, to begin um, for, or to at least set up for uh, the pressurization and of uh, the vestibule between Dragon and the station uh, later today. At this time, we are currently tracking a hatch opening time of 7.30 a.m. Central Time. We will continue to stay on the air and update you if anything uh, changes during that time. In the meantime, we'll be providing you live views uh, from the outside and inside of the International Space Station. At this time, uh, after the uh, initial procedures to set up for press uh, vestibule pressurization, the crew is now on a lunch break because they have a, a very busy afternoon, uh, Greenwich Mean Time, scheduled for them to pressurize the vestibule, enter the hatch, and conduct a welcoming ceremony. Stay with you live until that time. In the meantime, looking forward to hatch opening, uh, approximately 7.30 a.m. Central Time. This is Mission Control Houston.
Station Houston and two for Dragon at your convenience. Hey Ann, good news. We can report a good vegetable leak check. Um, so at this time, you guys do have a go to pick up in your Dragon Forward Pressurization and Ingress Part 2. In Step 3, Decimal 1, you will have a go. And we have some clarifying words about um, the PPE that you will be donning in Step 3, Decimal 6. Um, we want you to just be advised that you'll be leaving it on. And in Step 4, Decimal 1, it'll give you some additional guidance if you are able to take off that PPE or if you'll be leaving it on. Houston still currently tracking a hatch opening of Dragon of the Crew Dragon, currently on the forward end of the International Space Station, uh, at approximately 7:30 a.m. Central Time. We'll continue to provide updates as we track that time. In the meantime, the crew. Um, we're still maintaining uh, audio communications with the International Space Station and the three crew members of Expedition 58 on board. Still waiting for some video coverage, but you just have heard words that the crew, uh, there was a successful vestibule leak check. This is one of the milestones before the uh, crew actually goes in and performs a series of uh, che checks and procedures uh, before actually opening the hatch, again scheduled at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. Again, we'll continue to provide you with updates. We should be regaining uh, video communication from the station here shortly. This is Mission Control Houston. Thank <laughs> you. 